get your Bible. I want you to hold your Bible up with me. And it goes like this. This is my Bible. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Like a sharp two-edged sword, it is quick and alive. This is the word of God. With this word in my heart, I'm an unstoppable force. It is my compass and my road map and my guide until the end of time. Because the word of God in me is what the earth is waiting for. Y'all ready? Let's go. Um, giving greetings from Lighthouse for Jesus Ministries. Um, I thank God for my pastor, Donnie Bolden Sr., and his wife, Cynthia Bolden. <clears throat> I thank God for this opportunity um, that they've given me to speak the word, and I'll go into prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, God, I pray, Lord God, that you would give me utterance, O oh God, for the word, Lord God, tonight that you have given me. God, we believe in, Lord God, by faith, Lord God, that the hearers, Lord God, hallelujah, Lord God, that are at home watching, that they, Lord God, would receive what they need. In Jesus' name, Lord God, amen. Okay, the title of my message is, Thou Shall Not Want. And I was in a service, and um, the Spirit of God was real um, moving awesome in this service. And um, I, was, I was praying, and I was, you know, interceding and everything like that. And I heard the words uh, multiple times in my hearing, you know, thou shall not want, thou shall not want, thou shall not want. And I was uh, saying, God, what are you saying? Like, what are you saying? I know uh, of the passage in Psalms 23 where you uh saying that I shall not want. But what do you mean when you say thou shall not want? So um, I looked up the word thou, and I re the meaning of thou is uh, you. So I believe that God was speaking a word directly in my spirit, you know, telling me that you will not want. And a lot of times when I'm saying and saying this, people may think uh, materialistic things or things like that. And believe it, God does give those things. But whenever God was telling it to me, it wasn't in a materialistic realm. It was more of a spiritual uh, thing. So I ended up um, going back into Psalms 23 and we've heard this recited many of times and, you know, people use it at funerals, different things or whatever. It was written by King David and um, basically whenever you're saying thou shall not want, you will always have enough. So um, I felt very, very uh, happy in my spirit because uh, for God to speak something like that to me, um, I felt like, you know, I was in the right, headed in the right direction uh, of complete peace and, you know, in God. So um, when we're talking about want, we're talking about not having lack or need for anything. Um, because God gives us contentment. He gives us security, and he gives us fellowship. Um, I'm going to start off by reading uh, Psalms 23, the first passage. Um, and it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God is good and worthy of our trust. He's the good shepherd. So um, God, God is in control of everything. Um, that's why we, uh, when we live in God, we have no lack or want for anything. Um, to want something is to have a great desire for something um, to the point where it consumes you. Um, the second verse says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. Green pastures uh, symbolize comfort and peace and a better, more promising future. So basically God is saying, because I'm your shepherd, 
you're not going to want for anything. And I'm going to give you the comfort and peace and a promising future, a hope for the future. So verse 3 says, he restored my soul. He leaded me in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. And I like that, his name's sake. Everything that God does is to exalt his name. And he gives us uh, the Holy Ghost, and he allows us, uh, he entrusts us with his spirit to be able to be examples and to live a righteous life before people for him to get the glory. The glory is not in and of ourselves, but it is for him to get the glory. Um, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Okay, we're going to uh, go back to still waters. Still waters symbolizes rest and trust and confidence, a place of no distractions. Still waters are calm. So God is basically telling us he wants us to be in a place of rest. That's where he's leading, it, leading us to, to comfort us. Um, in a path of righteousness, he prepares a way of escape for us. Um, there's nothing that we go through that God hasn't already, you know, prepared a way of an escape for. So God is still that shepherd always guiding us and leading us in the path of righteousness. Um, for his namesake, uh, we have to be a witness, uh, for his name. We have to be a witness that Jesus um, has saved us and that he is continuing to lead and direct us in his right path. Uh, go down to verse 5. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup running over. So, before he talks about preparing a table in the presence of his enemies, he talks about the valley. The valley is a, a very is a place where we, as Christians, have all uh, been. A dangerous place, a place of risk and threats, but God is in that valley protecting us. You know, even in our dark times. And he said that he's gotten us with the rod and his staff, which directs and protect us. People are going to wonder how we made it, but it's because of God's favor over our lives. He prepares a table in the presence of, his in, in a, a presence of our enemies um, and anointing our head with all. Uh, when you anoint someone's head with all, it's a sacred thing. It's an honor. It's a beautiful thing. Um, the, our cup running over, the blessings of God is uh, over our life whenever the anointing of God is over our lives. And it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely, that's a statement of clarity. Uh, goodness and mercy will follow forever. So God definitely gives us a sure word that we will have goodness and mercy following us and that he is leading us in a path of righteousness. As far as us never needing or wanting, wanting for anything. Our cup running over more than we could ever ask. God has given me more than I can ever ask for. Um, so it really, it really resonates with me whenever he says, you're cut running over. Because um, many times, you know, in my life, whenever, um, before I came in God and, you know, my childhood and everything, there were times whenever, you know, I, I lacked things and I, I had need for things, you know, physically and spiritually. But God 
um, placed me, you know, in this house and in a place where he gave me some rest and some peace. And um, although I've been through many things, God has blessed me tremendously. His blessings, care, and mercy that has been over my life is remarkable. It's more than I could have ever imagined. Um, and sometimes even, you know, at, even if we get off track as Christians or um, in our daily prayer life or any way that we may get off track, that goodness and mercy that God gives us, uh, he restores us on the right track to seek him. When God give you that lifeline, please take it because God is ever giving us a lifeline. It's forever giving us a lifeline, forever giving us a way to be able to commune with him through prayer. Living in God's house and dwelling in it is two different things. He says, uh, surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Living in God's house and dwelling in it is two different things. While living means simply being alive, dwelling means we are not only present but flourishing and being nourished. <clears throat> God wants some growth. He wants us to flourish. He wants us to be an example. He wants some maturity. So we don't want to just live in God's house. We want to dwell in it, and we want to uh, simply be alive, not just simply be alive, but we also want to flourish in his presence. The ultimate house, when we're talking about being a part of God's house, the ultimate part of God's house is heaven. The Lord's true house is heaven. And that's, you know, the whole reason we serve God and follow Christ is because we want to make heaven our home. This is not our home. We only pilgrims passing through. So the ultimate place where uh, we're going to rest and have peace and, you know, everlasting joy is when we get to heaven. So God, God promises that we will dwell in his house, which is the house of the Lord, which is his heavenly house forever if we follow him. I have another scripture, uh, Romans 8 and 31. And Romans 8 and 31 simply says, um, if God is for us, who can be against us? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? God is a good shepherd, and he's for us. Um, he's always fighting for us. And he's always going to love us, but he's not going to force us to um, serve him. And I want to talk about a dream that I had. Um, I was uh, at home or whatever, and I had slept overnight. And immediately when I woke in the morning, I was telling my husband about a dream that I had had. And in the dream, I was living in a house with Aunt Anne and Pastor Donnie um, and my husband, and I had a room in this house. And one day I arrived home, and when I arrived home, I was troubled because all my things were moved out of the room that I was staying in. And so I was wondering, I was like, where is my, where, where will we sleep? Like, everything that we had in the room has been packed up, taken away, and you know, um, it was some renovation going on. <clears throat> So then I saw an Ann, and she was decorating this house. And I saw beautiful colors and designs that I had never saw in this earth. Then she looked at me, and she asked me, what's wrong? Because I was looking troubled. And I said, well, where will we stay? They moved everything out of the room, 
that we were living in, and she said, don't you know that this is your inheritance? And then I looked up at her, you know, puzzling. She said, she told me, she said, there was a lot of money that was given to us to redesign everything. So don't worry, this is yours. This, you know, this room is yours, this is your house. And at the entrance, I saw two young women checking people in at a desk. And y'all, this place was so beautiful. And like I say, the design and the architectural structure of everything was beyond what I could even describe. Um, the colors were colors that I can't even describe, but the most beautiful colors you ever want to see. So I talked to my husband about it, and I had talked to my mother-in-law about it. And my, hus my mother-in-law was telling me that it was colors that no man had ever seen. Oh, you know, it was, it was a heavenly thing, you know. And my husband was telling me that it was a good dream and everything. And I do believe that that inheritance that she was uh, talking about was heaven and that um, God allowed me to see a heavenly place and he allowed me to hear her utter those words about the inheritance and that, you know, heaven is all our inheritance. And the ultimate thing that after this experience happened, happened where I was on an altar and <clears throat> the spirit of God was dealing with me and saying, thou shalt not want. And then a couple of days later, I had this dream. It was not a coincidence. I do believe that God, you know, was showing, a, showing me a part of a heavenly realm. And on this earth, he was speaking and saying that we as the people of God will not have want or lack for anything if we continue to seek him and seek his face. Um, I've been listening to a couple of uh, songs, and one of them is talking about, uh, about different miracles. Uh, it's about elevation worship. And in the song, it says um, how God had bestowed so many miracles on his, on his person in their life. And it so much reminds me of my life, of the miracles, the many miracles that God has uh, bestowed on me in my life how um, God has taken me, you know, from a situation where of turmoil and has really, truly blessed me uh, spiritually, spiritually, physically, and financially. And in a song, it says that, you know, God was close, uh, even in the death of his brother, he was saying that God was closer than no other. And it was so relatable because um, Mother's Day had just passed, and I was thinking about, you know, my mom and everything like that. But I was thinking about the fact that even in the death of my mother, you know, it was a blessing because it was a way that taught me to seek God. And God gave me a lifeline and led me to this church. And he began to deal with me, and through that, is so many miracles and so many ways that God has blessed my life. You know, um, I can't even count them all. Like the song says, uh, the healing in my body that God gave me, uh, the miracle with my husband being able to give me a kidney. It's so many different things or whatever. But when you could find peace and rest in the fact that God may have taken a loved one but you know that it was nobody but God, and that particular trial or situation has brought you closer to God, that is what everything is intended for. Who would have known? I may have never even sought God in a way if I wouldn't have been so broken. So allow broken things and situations to be able to bring you to a closer relationship with God. Um, there are so many uh, things right now that's going on. So many people are so hopeless and uh, depressed and everything. But God wants us to have life and have life more abundantly. 
And uh, I believe when he gave that word, thou shalt not want, God wants us to be filled uh, completely with his spirit, with his joy, with his peace. He don't want us to have a lack or want for anything. He wants us to be confident in knowing that he has our back. Uh, with everything that's gone on in this world, he wants us to know that he is leading and guiding and directing our path. You know, Lighthouse for Jesus, God has our back and he is our shepherd. You know, and um, as our overseers, we continue to pray and lift them up as God has given them, you know, the message to give us and encourage us to guide us in the things that and the places that we need to go. I am forever grateful for the wisdom of this ministry. I'm forever grateful uh, for the people in the ministry and for the way um, that God has truly shined so brightly in uh, my husband and our lives. We are forever grateful. Um, I've been practicing a way of gratefulness um, over my life and speaking, you know, gratefulness uh, when I wake up in the morning. It's such a great thing just to walk in the gratefulness of God. You know, um, I get to wake up. I get to go to work. I get to, you know, talk to other people. There's so many people that don't, is, you know, locked up and don't get to do those things. So um, I'm forever in a way of gratefulness these days, and um, I'm forever in a way of living life um, in God and living it more abundantly because um, when God spoke, thou shalt not want, he really reassured me that it's not nothing that we as the people of God are going to lack for. I think when he said it to me, he meant it for all of us. Um, that we won't want for anything. God bless y'all. God keep y'all. I pray that this word has a uh, touch of hearts and that it has um, comforted you in ways that only God knows. Y'all be blessed.